Hello everyone, welcome back to this new review episode for the STM32 phone tutorial. And within this video, we are initiating the chapter for the timers. So, um, for this, just this episode, you just need to have a beginner level because we are going to, to understand how a timer works and just grasp the, the concept. Also, we are going to introduce how this chapter related to the timers will be made. So this chapter will start, first of all, this is the first video, we are going to introduce the timers in a very dummy way. Then we will start the part one, the big one, and understand the outputs that can be generated through the timers. And for that, we are going first to set up a delay function using a timer. After that, we are going to make an advanced function and use also interrupt with timers, which can be very interesting. Then we will use the compare and pwm functions and all these three video we will be using some hardwares like the stm32f1 the led and resistor for an example and logic analyzers this three one will help us to see and visualize the final output of our code we can use also this is optional a resistor which allow us to play a little bit with the led and understand what's going on and finally if you have the opportunity to have an oscilloscope, that would be quite nice to visualize how the timer is working. After that, we are going to use all that we learn to create a driver for the servo motor and understand how it works. So within that video, we will be needing the STM32F1, a small servo motor, and a 5 volt battery. Then we complete this output whole big chapter by creating an ESC drive function and the ESC is the electronic speed control and for this video we will need to have the STM32F1 and um, a brushless motor and a small um, electronic speed controller. After that we are going to jump to the input part of the timer where we are going to first of all create the functions that we will be using and understand how this input part is work which is called also capture and we will need only the STM32F1. Finally, we will finish by an example and we will create a driver for the SR04, which is a distance sensor. And for this one, we will need the STM32F1, the distance sensor, and a 5 volt battery. Okay, so let's take a start, take a look for the timers. So, what's a timer? A timer is a kind of programmable or maybe a smart stopwatch. And this timer that we do have inside our microcontroller there is quite a very good thing you can define the time sp unit speed or the step it can be microsecond millisecond maybe not second because we will explain it later on but you can have the division that you want and this is extremely interesting also within this timers you can count forward backward or even both. So you can start one, two, three, up to a certain number, and then go backward. It depends on how you'd like to set up your timer. And there's two big main functions in a timer. I already start introducing them when I showed the videos. It is the first one, the compare, which is related to the output, and we will understand what is it. And after that, the capture, which is the input. Okay, so let's take a look a little bit more. On the compare function and nothing better than a real life example the compare let's say you are a chef and you cook a pizza the best pizza in the world your secret is the pizza needs to stay in the oven for 7.24 seconds that's the secret to have the best pizza in the world and to do so you will need to use your timer and start counting so you put the timeline and you put where you like the timer to make an action so your timer will keep running and when it goes to that moment it will keep comparing and when it uh, when it is at the right moment that you set up within your timing then you can do something and this will trigger your microcontroller to do something for a certain time and that's what he's doing by comparing and the output is a timer asking the microcontroller to do something it can be by a pin that is turned high or low, or even 
asking a program to do something. That's the compare. Simply that. It's putting a certain point within the timeline and asking the microcontroller to do something accordingly. On the other hand, the capture is a little bit different, and we will take another example. Let's say you are preparing yourself to run the Olympics. So you start taking your jogging and you start running to see how good you are. But to understand how good you are, you will need to also to measure the time, how much you are going to do until the finish line. So you lead a stopwatch and you ask your friend to take that and to check how, how good you are. So your friend will keep watching you within the timeline and checking the time or capturing the time where you finish running. So you take six minutes for running. And at that time, at the arriving at the finish line, he will capture the time for a designated event. And after that, what will happen is based on that data, there is some decision that will be taken or some computing result will happen. And here, as the world record is 9 seconds, you are not that far, but unfortunately, you are not the new Olympic champion. And that's how the capture goes inside the microcontroller. So that's a short and simple explanation of how things work. And now, one of the advantages of the timer, one of the things that I really enjoy about the timer is that, let's take your microcontroller stack. So usually the microcontroller, what it will be doing, you will have instruction one, instruction two, three, until the last instruction, and you will go back again. The loop that will turn again and again within the instruction in your microcontroller. But the power of the timer is it's something running aside. So you are not wasting cycle time in a timer. So your microcontroller is doing his stuff, when the timer is counting and also trying to capture or to compare. And the good thing, within one timer, you can use one channel to compare and another channel to capture. And we will see this in details in the few next episodes. And meanwhile, you can link your instruction to, to input the data in the compare so you can change the timing of your output or also read the data from your capture so you can understand what are going in the dynamics of the system connected with the microcontroller. So you can see there's quite a good things from the timer. It's a stopwatch running really separately from the main stack. So you don't waste time of your microcontroller like watching and running. And this is quite a good advantage to, to, to see how the world outside world is working. Okay, so now we went through a very simple explanation of how the timer works. So nothing better to start seeing the next videos and let's start the code.